In this video, I'm going to go over how to create a copy of a file with C. So here I've got my original file with some content in it. If I want to create a copy of this file, one way I can do that is read all of its contents and write it to another file and that'll create a copy of it. So to do that, we're going to need a couple of file handles so we can access both the original file and the copy. So I'm going to say file star file and star copy. And these variables are going to store our file handles. And then we're gonna have to open up each file to get the file handle itself. So we'll say file is equal to f open file.txt and r. So f open is going to open up this file and it's going to return the file handle and file is going to store it. And f open is going to open the name of whatever file we give here as a string argument. In this case, it's going to be file.txt and r means open that file for reading. So we're going to be able to read from this file. Then we're going to open up the copy as well. We'll say copy is equal to f open copy.txt and then w. So this is going to do the same thing really as this f open, except it's going to open up a file called copy.txt and it's going to open it up for writing. That's what the w does. It's writing mode basically. So then we're going to check to see if the files opened correctly, because if they didn't f open is going to return null. So if either file or copy is null, that means that one of the files did not open correctly. Maybe the file name is wrong. Maybe the file doesn't exist, that sort of thing. So we're going to say here, if file is equal to null or copy is equal to null, we know something's gone wrong with opening up the files and we'll say printf error opening files. And then we'll return one. When we return one here, that's going to cause the program to exit because we're doing that in the main function and returning one is actually a signal that something's gone wrong with the program's execution, as opposed to when we return zero, which is a signal to the shell here, to the terminal that everything was actually okay. So then to actually read the content from this file and then write it to this copy.txt file here, we're going to use a couple functions to help us with that. So we'll say here, car C and C is going to store each character of this file here that we're going to read one at a time. And then we're going to have a while loop here like this. We're going to say while C is equal to F get C and then we're going to say file. So what F get C is going to do is it's going to use this file handle here for the original file. And every time it's called, it's going to return the next character in the file. So the first time it's called, it's going to return this S. The next time it's called, it's going to return this O, then this M, then this E and on and on. Now, eventually what's going to happen is it's going to return EOF, which is a special constant value, which means end of file. In other words, eventually when the end of file is going to be reached, F get C is going to return that end of file. And we'll just do a check for that. We'll say while C is equal to F get C, does not equal EOF, we're going to keep going. So basically read the next character in the file, assign it to C. And so long as this does not equal the end of file, keep going. And then what we'll do is we'll just write that character to our copy file. So I'll say here, F put C, C, and then copy. So F put C basically does the opposite of F get C. It's going to write this character, to this file here. So when this loop is done, we should have written all the characters in the original file to the copy. And when we're done that, we can close both files. So we'll say F close the file and F close the copy because we're done with them now. So this should work. Let's actually compile it here and then run it and we'll see what we get. So we run it. And if I do cat copy.txt, that'll let me see the contents of the copy and we get the contents of the original file. And so we've got the code here right now that's going to copy one file in C. Now, one thing we could do to make this program a little bit more interesting and fun is that we could set it up to use command line arguments to specify the name of the file to be copied and the name of the copy too. So what I'll do is I'm going to add some arguments to main here. I'm going to add some parameters to main here. I'm going to say int argc car star argv. Now, if you've never seen this before, argc is the number of command line arguments. So if I were to say here dot slash d f1 f2, this command here 
would have three command line arguments. The name of the executable program, the first argument, and the second argument. And these would count as three arguments total because the way C works is that it actually counts the actual executable as one of the command line arguments as well. So we basically have the executable program and two arguments. And so arg C would be equal to three. And this here, car star arg V, this is an array of strings. And we can actually access each individual command line argument here by using arg V. And arg V at zero is gonna be D, arg V at one is gonna be F1, and arg V at two would be F2. So let's actually write this code now so that we use command line arguments to determine the names of the files that we wanna copy here. So what I'll do is this, I'm gonna say here, if arg C doesn't equal three, we've got a problem because we're expecting basically this. We're expecting the name of the original file here and the name of the copy that we wanna create here. So we need at least three arguments, including the original executable name itself. So we'll say here, if argc doesn't equal three, three, we'll say printf argument number error. And then we'll return one. So if there's a problem with the number of arguments, we're gonna specify that here. And then what we'll do here is we'll say arg v one. And then here we're gonna say arg v two. And what that's gonna be is the string here in the case of arg v1 and the string here in the case of arg v2. So we're basically telling it now to use this command line argument as the name of the original file and this command line argument as the name of the copy file. So we could actually test this out. I'm gonna save this here now. I'll do a recompilation. And I actually made an F1 file as well. So we have an F1 file there. Now, if I say dot slash D F1, F2, what I'm saying is copy the contents of F1 into F2. So I run this here. And now if we check F2, we see the contents of F1 have been copied into F2 now. And so we've made this program a bit more advanced now in that we can specify with command line arguments, the name of the file to copy and the name of the copy to. Check out portfoliocourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.